Well, I knew this was going to be difficult, fourth of four, and before I start, I'd like to say that I totally agree with everything. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> But I'm going to say some different things. Right, first of all, 180 seconds flat, the stopwatch is on. Start. Let's go. Um, what does it mean to me? Well, it's a bit like golf. Who, who plays golf? Any golfers here? A bit like golf in many ways. Uh, a relatively small and shrinking percentage of the population. Love it. The Australian Masters has been scrapped for this year due to lack of interest. You may have noticed. Last year it was won by a 65-year-old man, Peter Senior, it's been scrapped. Other people make fun of golf and say things like this. <laughs> That's, apparently it's not Mark Twain. Everybody says Mark Twain said that, but apparently it's not. They don't know who said it first. Anybody can have a go at maths and golf, although it does help if your parents are educated. <laughs> Some people are naturals, I'm not one of them. I'm glad to hear Mr. Wu isn't either. Big admission, thank you. But most people need to work hard, already been said, and seek help and devote a lot of time to the sport. But no matter how good you are, no matter how old you are, there's another golf course you've never been to, and there's something else to learn about that, you know, the intentional hook, which I never did master. Um, other sports have moved to shorter versions of the game for the time poor and people with limited concentration spans. We're trying to resist that, aren't we? Did you see the, the prize money for the, the T20 World Cup? The men, the winning team for the men get $1.6 million. Have a look what the women are going to get. Our women are in the final. Yes, a fraction of the $1.6 million. And mass has been a bit the same and so has golf. Not far from here, there are golf clubs that until recently you couldn't become a full-blown member if you were a woman. Um, you were called an associate member. Um, have a look what Nalini Joshi said about what it's like when she goes to a function at the Australian Academy of Science. People look at her like she's there to serve food. Um, girls are dropping out of two unit much faster than boys. And it's always been an issue in extension one and two, and it's not getting any better, and now two unit is going the same way. It used to be 55% girls, it's now 45% girls. Um, people who like it have been known to wear strange clothes. <laughs> I think we're getting a bit better at that now. You guys look all right. <laughs> But in 1999, I worked with a maths teacher who wore socks and sandals and he taught Lauren down the front here for two years. <laughs> Anyhow, um, moving right along. Um, I've, I'm actually going to change the question, Judy, because the chief scientist in, Jan in February 2014, the chief scientist said, we have to stop talking about this, we have to do stuff. And I'm in the fortunate p position with the jobs I do, having taken a big risk of giving up my day job, that I am doing stuff. And this is some of the stuff I'm doing. With Norden, we did the survey. We, we would have been happy with 100 responses and we got 1,000, so that was good. And yes, we're, we're trying to raise some awareness um, about the situation. For a long time, it was all swept under the carpet, I think. We're providing information. Last year we published this brochure for year, kids in, in year 10 and their parents about what it means if you choose general and the ramifications of choosing general and lots that was given out in many, many schools. Um, so, and this year and last year and the year before, I'll be spending eight days in June at the Expos talking to kids in 10, 11 and 12. And you hear some shocking, you know, there's a, a teacher, a, a uh, hizzy teacher comes to me talking about her son's school, they've paid a fortune for this school and he's being told, you are not allowed to do extension one maths. He wants to be a pilot, but you are not allowed to even try, not even a three month trial of extension one, we're not gonna let you do it. Um, we're encouraging teachers and Right now I'm doing the tour of the New South Wales again, which I enjoy very, very much. Doing a, a PD course for two days called Fundamentals. That's not a typo. That's F-U-N as in fun. And we have a bit of fun. 
that's not a typo. And this, I've been to those places so far. This is uh, next week. I'm going to Wagga. It's going to be my 13th trip to Wagga, so I'm pretty excited about that. Dubbo was yesterday. Dubbo was yesterday. Uh, yeah, great times I had. This was the this was the target audience. This was the target audience. Uh, really going after people who are teaching in an out of field capacity, and they're turning up in droves. And I asked them, I asked them this question: What did you do? What did you do before you were a maths teacher? And this is what some of them said yesterday. Hey, you that. Right. Uh, and it's really, really, I think it was what, um, what Jackie said was very true. These people have chosen not to be a teacher and found the high paying career. In some cases, the very high paying career wasn't what they thought it was cracked up to be. And now they've come back to their passion and their passion is things like this. I'll, I'll, I'll make this available to you because Judy's giving me the, the, the wind up. Um, but they're saying things like that. That's the number one comment. I see the light in their eyes when they get something. I see, I see the look in their face. Hand up if that's, if that's your big motivation. Have a look around the room. Right. Every day is different. It's challenging. Plus, I get to spend school holidays with my own children. Um, this is a primary teacher who's changed into being a high school maths teacher. Well. Not officially, no retraining yet. Uh, I think one thing I'm really pushing for is to make it easier for these people to become bona fide maths teachers. And right now the path for these people to become maths teachers in New South Wales is certainly not appropriate. Um, what these people really want to know is, what do I do in the first lesson of trigonometry with year nine? They don't want to do partial differential equations, and currently that's what they have to do. Um, <coughs> so, these people, in, in many cases, these are people who have teaching skills already, they have parenting skills, they have real life skills, they have, they have industry skills, they bring tremendous things to their teaching, but they need help to do it better. They need subject knowledge and, and practical teaching ideas, like the ones you get here from Maria and Judy and myself. That's what they need in spades right now. Right, I'll leave you at that. Thank you, Stuart. Cheers. Thank you.